In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Cousineau syntax, which is an SPSS syntax file, for the purpose of calculating power when the groups have unequal sample sizes. And the key difference is you have to calculate the harmonic mean. So in the first case, I'm going to show you how I did the calculations for the fictitious study about exercise and attention span, where the effect size was equal to a Cohen's D or a Hedges G of 0.40. So 0.40 is what is expected in the population. So technically, we should be calling it Cohen's D. And the sample size was equal to 50 in each group. So 50 here and 50 there. And this is the portion of the syntax where you have to input the harmonic mean. And the harmonic mean, when you have two sample sizes that are equal, is equal to the simple mean. So how you can calculate the harmonic mean, HRM mean. So that's harmonic mean. and you would put the first value and then the second value after the comma and, and return. So harm mean 50-50. And then I get a harmonic mean of 50. And that's why in the foundation section of the chapter, I just put the average for that study, which was relevant to, I believe, wearing glasses or not, and perceived intelligence. So in this study, it's a little bit of a different framework. It's the same type of design, but a little bit of a different study. Now the other part of information that I need is the critical t value in the t distribution. And I have to use the t inverse function for that. So equal t dot inverse dot 2t. And then I put the probability, which is alpha equal 0 0.05. And the degrees of freedom, which is total n minus 2. And in this case, that's 98. And I get this value of 1.984467. And that's what I inputted over here. So if I run this syntax, I'll get an estimate of power. Now what you have to do is you have to make sure that you have one column of data that are active. So you just put in any value, put a 1, and then the power estimate is going to show up in this column here. So now I click on Run, and I get the power for the first study, which to three decimal places is equal to 0 0.506. So there's roughly a 51% chance of rejecting the null hypothesis if I conduct a study where I'm expecting a Cohen's D of 0 0.40 and the sample sizes are 50 and 50 in each group for a total sample size of 100. In the second part of the demonstration, I suggested calculating the power of a study that has a total sample size of 200, but the split is 175 in one group and 25 in the other. What kind of power do you get? Well, I have to calculate the harmonic mean for that type of study after I input the individual group sizes here, 175 and 25, I need the harmonic mean of 175 and 25. So I need to re-estimate that over here. So harmonic mean, I'm going to use the same function. I'm just going to replace the 175 and the 25. Click OK. And I get 43.75. And so I need to put that over here, 43.75. And I also need the critical portion of the t distribution associated with 198 degrees of freedom because the total sample size here is 200. So I can do that with the inverse function, inverse t. Keep alpha at 0 0.05, but the degrees of freedom are now 198. And then I get a critical t value from the t distribution of 1.972. So let me just input that part, 1.972. 017, 017. So now I'm going to re-estimate power. I'm going to call it power 2 so that I can keep the first power estimate. So click on Run. And then I get a second power estimate of 0.46. And if I get that to three decimal places, 0 0.460. So 0 0.56 for the study with a sample size of 100, a total sample size of 100, split 50-50 and a power of 0.46, lower power, for a study with a total sample size of 200, but split 175 and 25. So I think that's quite interesting. And it demonstrates the relationship between sample size and standard error is very nonlinear. And that means that you get much more bang for your buck between sample size of 5 to 50 than you do from 150 to 175, or 125 to 175. And so if you have one sample size that's really small relative to the other, so you only have a sample size of 25, it really is quite a serious penalty with respect to power. 
So a demonstration of how to use the syntax to calculate power for an unequal sample size case where you have to calculate the harmonic mean, that's the main difference, and also a demonstration of how power differs when the sample sizes differ. Now, the independent sample t-test will work no matter what. If you have unequal sample sizes, it's totally fine. The independent sample t-test will work, but there is an impact on power.